What's going on, Wall Giants? My name is Ryan. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we're talking about the peg ratio, which is probably why you clicked on this video to begin with. We're going to be talking about what it is, how to calculate it, what a good peg ratio is, as well as how to use it. And last but not least, the warnings, because like all things stock market related, nothing is simple. It's like they don't like us. I don't know. Now, with that said, it takes a lot of work to put these videos together. There's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes. So I'd really appreciate it if you peg the like button. It helps out the channel a lot, as well as I'd love to see you in the community. So please consider subscribing by hitting that subscribe button down below. Now, if you have a question or want to make a statement, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to communicate with you. With that, let's go ahead and talk about the peg ratio. So first, what does PEG even stand for? PEG stands for price per earnings to growth ratio, which is basically the PEG ratio is an extension of the PE ratio. Now, if you're not sure what a PE ratio is, that's okay. I'll leave a tag up above and a link in the description below. That goes to one of my videos that explains the PE ratio. Now, PE ratio in short is basically the value of the company and the growth is the EPS projected growth in percentage form of that said company that you are looking at. So what you are doing is you're taking the value of the company and comparing it to the growth of the company. To calculate it, you take the PE ratio and you divide it by the percentage growth of earnings per share and that gives you the PEG ratio. So say for example, the company has a PE ratio of 100 and the growth percentage, the projected growth percentage is 10. So basically you're gonna take 100 and divide it by 10, ending up with a PEG ratio of 10. Now the simple way to find the peg ratio is to simply Google it or go to Yahoo Finance, go under statistics and look at the peg ratio that they have come up with. All right, now that we know what a peg ratio is, let's consider what a good peg ratio is. Is it 10 like we had in our example or is it something else? Now a peg ratio of 1.0 is actually considered a fairly valued company for its projected growth. Anything above a 1.0 is actually considered overvalued. Anything below a 1.0 is actually considered undervalued. With that said, don't go out buying and selling shares just based off of the peg ratio alone. As we all know, variables are not always perfect, especially in the stock market. So what I would go about doing to determine whether or not a peg ratio is a good one or a bad one is to compare the company that I'm looking at its peg ratio to another company in the same industry that is actually maybe its closest competitor. So for example, if I'm looking at an automotive company, I'm going to be comparing it that automotive company to other automotive companies. So if I'm looking at GM, I'm gonna be looking at Ford's peg ratio, I'm gonna be looking at Honda's peg ratio, Toyota's peg ratio, I'm gonna be looking at them all. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare them and if the peg ratio is above the peg ratio of all the other companies, I would consider that company well overvalued and possibly not worth buying into. Now. Keep in mind there are other variables that could have boosted that peg ratio up and could boost it up even further. Who knows? You have to do the research. Now if it is below all of the other automotive companies peg ratios, say all of them are at like a 1.37 and now this one is at like a 1.2, I would look into why doing the research of maybe this company is going under, maybe there's something going wrong with it, they're not producing as many vehicles, things like that to figure out why it's so undervalued. And if you can't find any, it is potentially a good buy because it has room to grow to become equal with all of its competitors. Warnings. Analysts are the ones who come up with the predicted growth rate of a company, okay? They are the ones who determine this and they probably can do a better job than you or I could considering all the tools, resources that they have. On top of that, the education that they have as well. Not to say that they're perfect, but they can be wrong. And on top of that, current events could change the predicted growth of a company, depending on what it is, that could be out of their control, such as a once in a hundred year event, like the illness that is going about. I'm not gonna say the name, but you know what I'm talking about. The second thing is hype can alter the company's stock price, which could change the peg ratio of that company, okay? If it gets overbought or oversold based off of positive or negative information that's going about about the company, that can change the peg ratio as well. 
The third thing, it is only one variable. You should never base your purchase decision off of one variable. You should always think about everything as a whole and accumulate it in one nice package and say, hmm, I like this package. I can hold on to this and not feel uncomfortable if the stock dips. So that is what I would consider. I actually have a video that is eight things that I would look at in a company before I even consider touching the buy button. I'll leave the link over to my left right down at the bottom. And if you're looking for another other variable that can kind of predict the future of a company I would check out my video about forward and trailing PE ratios I'll leave it up here and this column over here it'll pop up in just a second now thank you for watching if you made it this far please consider hitting that like button for the YouTube algorithm and thank you so much for watching it's very much appreciated also if you want to see more videos like this please consider hitting that subscribe button over to my right it's an ugly mug it looks like this one I'll see you guys in the next video Peace.